Hey everyone, it's Lee, aka Regicidal, and I'm here with the second episode of Let's Play RuneScape. In the last episode, you guys created your character and entered the land of Gilinor, which is the main land of RuneScape. Today, you will be learning the ropes, so log in and let's get ready to play. After you pick your username, you'll get sent in-game, where you will complete the tutorial. Now, for anyone who played the game in the older days, they know that there was a tutorial island. Now you just get sent directly into the game, but you have to complete a few tasks. You don't really have to complete them, but it's suggested to so you can learn more about the game. Now it comes up right here with the controls telling you that the arrow keys rotate the camera and uh, mini gr the mini map if you click on the ground you'll walk and control plus click is to run or you can just hit this button right here which will enable run. So I'm going to rotate the camera a little bit and it it'll remove the the message screen and there will be a flashing arrow pointing to Explorer Jack who you want to talk to when you begin. There's a little arrow here pointing to where you go. So there you go. You'll Go right here and you'll talk and it says, ah, welcome to RuneScape lad. Now you can either click the arrow key right here like I just did, or you can hold down the space bar and absolutely skip everything he says. So it just speeds by. But anyways, let's just do this tutorial for a second. Every task will earn you a little bit of value, which will give you some coins. And for every task completed, you get further progress to a reward. So here's the task button right here. I'll go through the other buttons in a little bit. But the task button is the button you click to see what task you have to complete. Now for completing the task, I already got one GP for it, which is a gold piece, which is the money currency in this game. Now the next task that they want me to do is grab the cash. There's a small pile of coins on the ground near Explorer Jack's house. Click on it to pick it up. As you see, the, the arrow points to it on the mini-map and on the game. So then I'm going to run over and click the coins. Here's how you run. You turn on the run screen right there, and you pick up the coins. Now grab the cash is complete, and they also want me to turn on my run, which I'll turn on again. So there's another task. After you complete the first few tasks, then the arrow trail actually leads you to other tasks that you can complete. So now they want me to complete Intervention, which a goblin is attacking a man in Lumbridge, investigating the situation and intervene. So they want me to investigate the situation. See, as you see, when you start off the game, they pretty much just give you a bunch of tasks right off the bat for running, for all the, doing the basic things. So here's just a cutscene of the Intervention task that I'm about to complete. They give you a trail to where you should run to. Now you see the man being attacked by the goblin. Now you can just click on the man and he will give you a little chat scene. What's going on here? Give it to me, give it to me, shiny. Obviously he's got some coins. Now you can either attack the goblin or try the diplomatic approach. So I'm going to try the diplomatic approach. What are you fighting over? A bronze sword. It tells you a little bit of a storyline. Now you just tell him to go away and the goblin goes away. So now I completed intervention and now escort duty is my new task, which wants me to escort the wounded man to Azenia in the graveyard south of Lumbridge Church. So now for anyone who doesn't know, this is the town called Lumbridge, which is pretty much the main town for rookie players. When you log in, this is the town that you will be in when you first create your account, as you saw before. And this is just the main town for when you start. So this town's pretty basic. There's nothing really advanced in this town, but it's just a general store, a castle, a bunch of quests. So this is the main town when you start. So the, now I want to escort the wounded man south. I'm going to run. As you see, he follows me. Obviously, there's other ones for other players. So, you can walk on this part so you don't lose him. He catches up to you if you run, though, so it doesn't really matter. The man will then follow you. This is the Lumbridge graveyard over here, for anyone who doesn't know. All you have to do is click Xenia. Tell her that the man was wounded. She says, terribly wounded, A, And she patches him up a little bit. And you'll see right there, now he's good as new. You also unlock a music track when you go into the graveyard for yesteryear. So that cutscene is complete. They exchange gifts or whatever, and uh, you've completed that task. Now we did all the tasks, and technically you don't have to do any more for the tutorial. You really finished everything you need to know, but you really didn't. So I'm going to start you guys off on the right foot and do the first official quest, the Blood Pact. So right now there's a trail of dots going to Xenia, who is the first quest starter. And I'm going to talk to her, and she said, I'm glad you come by, I need some help. So basically, this is going to be your first quest that you've ever done. You ask her, what do you need help with? And she gives you this whole storyline, you just say, I'll help you. And this comes up, this is what comes up for every quest. Now, you can mark it on the map, which gives you blue boxes on where you need to go. I'm going to keep it checked so you can see how it looks. But this is what the requirements are, required items and rewards. So we're going to get one quest point, a sword, a sling, a magic staff, and a bunch of XP. So... Let's get this started. We'll accept the quest. I knew you would. Blah, blah, blah. 
Now the on the minimap you can see that there's a giant blue box highlighted. So this means we're in the right spot. So now we have to talk to Azenia again. And she said, I'll come to the catacombs and I'll follow. So we gotta go into the catacomb entrance right here. So this is where the box is. And Xenia follows us. So you get a little cutscene right here of this woman, Alona, I guess her name is. Alona and Reese. Alona, Reese is this guy, and Caitlin's this girl. You get a little storyline. Once again, you can click on this or you can hold the space bar to skip this if you don't care about storylines that much. But it's pretty cool to follow along. So they're just talking and uh, talking about the prisoner they have. Now we're in the catacombs. If you want to figure out what to do next in the quest, you can click on the blood pact and it says, I should accompany Azenia to fight the first cultist. So we have to go on here. As we came down here, we also unlocked a music track, the pact. As you walk around RuneScape, you will unlock more and more music tracks. So I just stepped into here and Xenia died. So there's a problem. It looks like I'm too old for this. You'll have to do the rest without me. I'll follow you, blah, blah, blah. So we have to go and fight the boss. So she's going to follow us apparently. But here's the first boss, Kale. So we're going to punch him. We're going to punch him to death. We have no items, no weapons. So we're just going to punch him to death. I'm pretty sure you can't die, but I haven't done this quest as a level 3. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. So Kale's going to die. And there it is. Alright, blah, blah, blah. He gives you a storyline and we killed him. After you kill him, now you just talk to him. He asks, are you going to kill me? And you, you ask him some questions because you want to know some information about the situation. Who are you? Who are the others? What are you planning to do down here? He just explains that he's a servant. And then you just keep asking him questions until all the questions run out. Enough questions. Are you going to kill me now? And then you just say, yes, now die. And you kill him, and now he's gone. So Xenia comes over here. You pick up the sling, you get a task complete, defeat the ranger. So, we're going to come over here. We have to kill a second boss, which is right here, Caitlyn. You can't melee her, so that's what the sling is for. He drops a sling because it's a ranged weapon. So, as you attack, you can kill her. As she hits you, she's using magic and you're using range. So when you hit, a little range thing will come up. And when she hits, a mage thing will come up. But you can use rapid on the sling. It hits faster. It hits less accurate, but more speed. Accurate obviously hits more accurate and less speed, and long range is you can attack from longer distances, but no speed. Now we've defeated the mage, Caitlyn, and we have to go over there and talk to her like we did with the other guy. So we're going to operate the winch so we can go and talk to Caitlyn. Now we get a task, cross the balcony. Now we're going to go and talk to Caitlyn like we did with the other guy. And she'll have some information for us as well. What are you waiting for? Finish me. I have some questions. You're going to run through who are you, who are the others. Same questions you asked the other guy. What were you planning to do down here? The Tomb of Dragoth Nern. Enough questions. And then we're, we're going to slaughter her. So she says, I'm not pitying your judgment, but we get Caitlyn's staff, so that's another mage weapon. That's a mage weapon, we got a task for that. We can actually activate Wind Rush. we'll auto-cast that because the next boss needs to fight against magic, so we're going to go downstairs. Alright, so now you just got to open the door, talk to Reese, and we're going to attack Reese. When these come up, this is just the leveling up reminders, so when you are using a certain thing, so we're using magic and hit points, these will come up and tell you how much XP to your next level and how close you are to making progress to leveling up. So these are pretty helpful when you train. Now that we've beaten Reese, it says you've beaten me, adventurer. Now strike the final blow. First you ask him some questions like you did with the other people. Who are you? Who are the others? Just like the last time. And then you ask him what his final plans were to take over Lumbridge. And that's enough questions and we're going to finish him. And he is dead. So we've killed Reese, and now Alona, we have to untie before the whole thing corrupts, and we've untied her. We could have took Reese's sword, but it's a little too late for that now. Now we've saved her life, is there a reward for this? And Xenia lets you complete the quest, she gives us Reese's sword that we left behind. And there it is, your first quest complete, congratulations, you have completed the blood pact. You get one quest point, Kale's sling. Caitlyn's staff and Reese's sword, 
and you get a bunch of XP and your combat stats and access to the Lumberge Catacomb Dungeon. So you exit out of that, and look, we just leveled up. You get a bunch of fireworks. It tells you what you leveled up. Magic, you got two. So from that quest, we got two attack, two strength, two defense, two range, and two magic. So that's pretty cool from that quest. Now, about the interface, I'm going to go over here and explain the interface a little bit more. As you see, they're blinking, which means that there's more information to find out about your level. So we're going to go to the attack one. And now, at level two, I can't do anything. But at level five, I can unlock steel weaponry. Right now, I can use iron and bronze weaponry. Black weaponry is at 10. Mithril weaponry is to 20, and so on and so on. There's a lot of weapons that you can use when you're a member. And this is pretty much the skill advanced guide. So you can find out anything about any skill right here. So fletching, fishing, fire making, just a whole guide of what you can do at different levels. So this is a pretty helpful thing if you ever need to find out what level unlocks what. So to get rid of the flashing icon, you just click on the symbol of the skill and it goes away. You can find out about what you unlocked, but we didn't unlock anything really with level 2 because that is just the beginner levels. So you really don't unlock anything till level 5, but I'm just going to click out of these so they're not blinking anymore. And that is all. So that is all your leveling ups. So that brings us to the interface. Now that we've completed our first quest and we've done the beginner tasks, I want to show you a little bit more about the game and less about the task system. So this is the interface. Now the interface has a lot of buttons. As you can see right here, this is the interface. Each button does something different. This is the backpack, which is the inventory. This holds 28 things, whatever you want. You can hold logs from skilling. You can hold potions and food if you're going to battle. You can hold weapons and armor if you're going to battle. So whatever you want, you can hold right in your inventory. You can hold 28 things. There's familiars from summoning that holds more things. And there's also a bank which holds more things, but 28 things you could take with you on an adventure. This is the quest tab. This displays all the quests. The quests that we've completed are in green, and the quests we haven't started are in red. The quest that we've started but haven't completed would be in blue. And you can see right here we've beat the blood pack, so it's green. And the other quests are in red. The next tab is the skills tab. This is where all your skills are located. You have 25 skills in general if you're a member, but only 16 if you're free to play. So we're in free to play, we only can level up 16 stats, but if you become a member, you can level up 25 stats. Now, here are the stats. Attack, Strength, Defense, Ranged, Prayer, Magic, Runecrafting, Construction, Dungeoneering, Hit Points, which is Constitution now, Agility, Herb Lore, Thieving, Crafting, Fletching, Slayer, Hunter, Mining, Smithing, Fishing, Cooking, Fire Making, Wood Cutting, Farming, and Summoning. Now there are Combat Stats and Non-Combat Stats. The Combat Stats, which raise your Combat Level, which is located right here, you can see we're level 4 from completing that quest, we got level 2 in all the Combat Stats, but the Combat Stats include Attack, Strength, Defense, Ranged, Prayer, Magic, Constitution, and Summoning. Now Summoning is a member skill, but in free-to-play you can do everything but Summoning for combat. The max level in free-to-play is 126, and the max combat level in members is 138. So that's with summoning, it raises it 12 levels. The non-combat stats being everything else, those are just skills. They raise your total level. So do the combat stats, but the combat stats also raise your combat level. The non-combat don't raise your combat level. So this is your skills tab. If you want to see how close you are to next level, you can just hover over a skill, and it says right there, remainder 195 XP until we're 11 constitution. And that's how you figure out if you're going to level up soon and how close you are to the next level. The max level is 99, but Dungeoneering and Members goes from 99 to 120 for the extended content. The next tab is the task system. We have went through this before. This is where all your tasks are. To find out more about the tasks, say this one tooling up, acquire a free pickaxe and hatchet. If you want to find out more about it, you can just click on it and it tells you the hints, rewards, and description of the task. The next tab is the combat styles tab. This is how you train different attack styles. This one, as you see, it says Accurate, Stab, Attack, XP. So you will be training Attack with this sword. When you attack, you will be getting Attack, XP, which levels up Attack. But it says if you want to level up Strength, you can click on this one. And it says Aggressive, Stab, Strength, XP. So all you do is click on that to train Strength. And also if you want to train Defense, you can click on the block one, and you will be getting Defense, XP when you attack. So this is how you train different skills. Make sure if you want to level up the right thing, you're on the right Attack style, or else you won't level up the right thing. The auto retaliate button over here, if it's on, if something attacks you, you will automatically attack back. If not, then you will not attack back automatically. You'll have to click on the guy in order to attack. The next tab is the worn equipment tab. This is where you can see all of your armor and equipment. Right now we have no armor as you can see right here. No cave, no helm, no amulet, no plate, no legs. 
No shield, no anything. All we have is a sword, so we have Reese's sword equipped it in the sword slot, in the hand slot. And these are a little bit of tabs that help you along the way. This is your equipment stats. As you see with Reese's sword equipped, we have a plus 7 strength bonus, a plus 1 crush bonus in defense, and a plus 2 slash bonus in defense. And we also have a plus 6 stab bonus in attack, plus 4 slash bonus in attack, minus 2 crush in attack, and 0 everything else. Now, every armor in the game gives a different amount of stats. Now, obviously, the better armor you go, the better bonuses you have. Now, this sword isn't very good, obviously. It's a beginner sword. But plus 7 strength isn't bad for when you first start off. But as you get better, you can get better weaponry and have better bonuses overall to hit higher and protect you better. So that is what the bonuses are for. And right here, it displays your weight. So if you have a lot of weight, you will obviously not run very fast. But if you are lightweight, then you will be able to run very fast and not run out of energy so quick. The next button is the items kept on death. When you die, you keep a certain amount of items. So when you have expensive things on you and you don't want to die, then you can just click on this button and see what you would lose and what you would keep. So this button is helpful along the way. And then the last button is the tool belt button, which you can store your supplies in, like a bronze pickaxe, a hammer, a chisel, a bronze hatchet, or a knife. You can also store fishing supplies, crafting supplies, or farming supplies, but that's for members. So that's a little helpful tool belt so you don't have to carry the things in your inventory and you could save some space. The next tab is the prayer tab, which these prayers are supposed to help you with combat. Now, we are level 1 prayer and we have 10 prayer points. Now, how that works is whatever your level is in prayer, it's times by 10 and you will have that many prayer points. So we're level 1, so we have 10 prayer points. And just like constitution, we have 10 constitutions, so we have 100 hit points. Now, with the prayer tab, say if I wanted to activate thick skin which increases my defense by five percent when activated if I was in a battle I would just click on the button and I would activate thick skin and as you see my prayer points are going down not my prayer level my prayer level remains at one but my prayer points decline so you're gonna say oh what happens when you run out of prayer points well when you run out of prayer points like I just did then then you would have to find an altar or a prayer potion and basically you just run to the altar there's an altar right here in Lumbridge right across from the castle and what you do is you just go inside, you find the altar, and you just click Pray Altar, and you will get all of your prayer points back. So now we're back at 10, and we can resume to pray again. But we're not in battle, so we don't have to pray, but that is the Prayer tab. Now this is the Spellbook tab, which is all your magic spells from alchemy, enchanting, teleporting, and combat spells. You can activate better spells at higher levels of magic, obviously, but for now we're one magic, so all we can do is home teleport. What the home teleport does, I'll show you later. When you click it, it brings you right back to Lumbridge Castle. So if you ever are in a jam and you don't know where you are, you can always home teleport and end up at Lumbridge Castle. The next tab is the friends tab. I've already added my main account regicidal. Obviously, I'm not online. But to add someone, you just click this button and you type in, say, if your friend's name was Derek on RuneScape, you can add Derek. And if he was online, he would show online and I could just click him and hit message and then type to him. Just say, if he was online, I would click him. It would come up right here. I would say hi and it would go right to him. To remove someone, you can just right click, hit delete, or you can hit remove friend and type in Derek and he would be gone. Also with the friends list, you have an ignore list. So this is the ignore list. Say if someone was bothering me and his name was, let's say Rick, we can add Rick to the ignore list and Rick can no longer message us on game and we can no longer see what Rick says. To remove someone, same kind of method as the friends list. The next tab is the friends chat. This is where you can go into a random chat and talk to people that are playing the game. I'm going to go into my main account's French chat, and we've got people here. I'm going to say hi to my French chat. To talk in the French chat, all you do is forward slash and type wherever you want. So it's one forward slash to talk to the French chat. And if you wait, people can respond right here, and you get right there. People will talk to you in the chat. Hi there, hi. So. You can enter any person's chat in the game. You just have to you just have to enter any chat. So if you want to go to Zezima or if you want to go to any player in the game, they have a chat and you can just talk with other players that are in the game. The next tab is the clan tab. Whenever you're in a clan, all of your clan members will be listed here and you can chat with them too. So if you're in a clan, you can do two slashes and write hi and it would enter into the clan, but it says I'm not in a clan chat channel. So it's two forward slashes to talk in the clan, but Right now you shouldn't be worried about a clan because right now you're starting off the game. So you're not looking for a clan right now. Later on we'll look for a clan and once you're in a clan you can talk amongst your clan members. Right here only your clan members can enter. But in the friends chat 
anyone can enter. So that's the difference between the two chats. The next tab is the settings tab. Now this is a very important tab. You've got your graphical settings, your audio settings, your mouse settings, your profanity filter, your chat effects, your clan chat options, your accept aid, your house options, and your adventure log option. Now we'll start with the bottom buttons and then we'll get into the top buttons. We'll start off with the bottom button here. This is the profanity filter. The filter is currently on so if I were below the age of 13 and someone said shit it would block out the cuss word shit but if I kept it off I would say shit and I would see it in game so that's the profanity filter button I keep mine off the ABC chat effects which is currently on if I wanted to type in say cyan I could say cyan high out loud and you could see cyan but if you turn off the button it just goes to yellow so say let's let's put in cyan again and it says high and it's just yellow because the chat effects are off so I keep my chat effects on, so if anyone is using sparkly text, you can see. The clan chat options are displayed here. This is how you change the color of people's chats. So like right here is in green. If I wanted to change that, I would go to the French chat and I could change it to blue and right there it changes, but we'll keep it on green. This is how you change the colors of your chat. If any color bothers your eye or you're colorblind, you can edit that. This is your house options. Right now we don't have a house and we're not a member, so we can't train the construction skill. But if we had a house, then we can click this and it has all the options there. This is the adventurer's log options. When you have an adventurer's log, you can toggle the different options there. And now these are your important buttons up here. Right now, the mouse button is currently on two. I have a right click and I have a left click. So this is a left click and this is a right click. So that is the left and right click. You can turn that off and you can have just one button, but obviously it's easier to play with two. So we keep two mouse buttons on. Make sure it's on two or else you'll have difficulties playing. Then you have your audio settings, which is your music, your sounds, and your area sounds. So you can edit this however you want. If you want to hear the game sounds really loud and the area sounds really loud, you can turn it all the way up. If not, you can turn it all the way down. Same with the music, if you don't have to hear it at all. So that's your audio options. And then you have your graphic options. Now, here's one thing they did differently. You can, first of all, customize anything you want. You have you know, either min, low, mid, high, custom. You can do software, OpenGL, DirectX. You can use whatever you want. And you can edit whatever settings you want in here. You can use anti-aliasing. You can turn off the fog. It depends how your computer can run. But you can run this game at pretty high settings. So now what's different about RuneScape is you used to only be able to play fixed screen. But now you can play resizable and full screen. Now, resizable and full screen looks a lot like World of Warcraft. I'm obviously referencing World of Warcraft because it's the most similar to RuneScape. And I know others play other games, but I'm referencing that because it's the closest comparison. So... I'm going to show you what resizable looks like. I don't like resizable personally because I don't like the layout of, you know, World of Warcraft, say. But I like to fix the classic RuneScape look right here, like how it looks. So this is, we'll show you fixed screen again. This is the fixed screen. And now I will show you the resizable screen. Now this is the resizable screen. So you can obviously see a big change. You can see more of the scenery. You can see a bigger proportion of the screen. And you also have all these things out of nowhere. So. Here is your next task over here. You have your chat box over here, which you can make as big as you want. You have your buttons on the bottom instead of on the side all together, all bunched up. Now you have them all on the bottom like you would on World of Warcraft. You have your mini-map in the top right, and then you have all of the area around here. So this is the whole area. So it's a really smooth-looking game. You can see more of the scenery. So it's really nice to play on Resizable. It's a nice little option they gave us over time. So that's one big change they've had. So let's go back to Fixed. All right, now we're back on fixed, so let's close that out. And that was all your options. The next tab is the emote tab, which is the emoticon tab. These are pretty useless, but they're cool to see and cool to play with. If you're ever interacting with other players, you can do different emotes together. The yes emote, the no emote, the wave emote, it's just a wave hi to someone. I know other games have the dance emote, and this is the dance emote on RuneScape. In 2006, it was much different, but they changed it to look like that. So that is the new dance emote. And you've got all these emotes. You can unlock other ones through random events, through loyalty reward shop, through quests and through holiday events so you have a lot of emotes here that you can unlock and you can unlock them more as you play with the game so that is that the next tab you have is the music tab now this is all the runescape music tab you can't add your own music into the game but you can obviously play the game with your own music playing uh, a lot of people don't listen to the runescape music but it's not that bad they actually updated some of the songs and they're getting better so if you want to you can listen to all the songs obviously red is the ones that you don't have and green is the ones that you do have and uh, you can listen to the songs if you want, but you just have to make sure that your sound setting is all the way up so you can hear the music. And lastly is the note tab. 
you can write up the 30 notes. As you see, I wrote two already here. But if you want to add a note, a personal note to yourself, you can hit the plus sign, add note, and just write, hello world. Just say that, and right there it's in your notes. So if you have to do something and you need to go back somewhere or you want to leave a mental note on your note tab for yourself, then you can do that right there. And to delete, all you do is highlight it and hit the trash can and it's gone. So let's delete all my notes because they're not very helpful, are they? And that is all. So that is the whole interface tab right there. Also, you have the mini map, which right here you have the compass telling you north is that way, west, east, south. You've got your hit points up here, you've got your prayer up here, your prayer points, and you've got your energy up here. Also, you have the XP button, which tells you how much XP you gained. We've gained 550 XP since we've started playing. And you can keep that up to see what skills you know, you're know you leveling up. You can edit it right here, you can do the setup, and you can change what you want to see. So say if I want to see how much XP I'm gaining at attack, I can put right here on counter 1, we'll keep overall XP. Counter 2, we'll put attack XP. And counter 3, we'll put, say, constitution. So whenever you're leveling up those stats, it'll tell you how much XP you've gained in those stats. So that's a cool little tool to use while you're playing the game. Next you have the money pouch, which holds all of your coins. As you see, we have 99 from doing the tasks before. And uh, this is where you keep all your coins. So if you need to trade another player or take out your money, all you do is withdraw a money pouch. Say we want to take out 96 coins. We take them out, and there's your coins right there. You can add to pouch, drop them, and you can trade with other players and put them up for whatever item you want and accept and that is how you spend your money and lastly on the interface you have the world map so let's click the world map and I'll show you what that looks like as you can see we're on the world map the world map tells you all of the town names you can scroll north west south east wherever you need to go and it tells you what towns are what it also tells you where you are there's an X right there and it says you are here it also tells you where your task objective is so as you can see we're pretty close to the task objective and also, if you're ever stuck or you don't know where to go, say if we're in Lumbridge and we need to go to Draenor for a quest, you can open up the world map and see how close you are to it and take the fastest route. Alright, so that brings an end to this episode. I know I make episodes every Wednesday, but I'm going to add another episode every Saturday so you can learn RuneScape faster. I know learning it at a one video per week basis is not very fast and you don't get all the information you need, so I'm going to make two episodes per week so that you can start playing RuneScape more efficiently. So every Wednesday and every Saturday, you will get a new episode of Let's Play RuneScape. So I will catch you guys in the next one where we will learn about banking, trading, and leveling up your skills. So until next time, guys, I'll see you Saturday.